What plan should we have? What should be the fire that we're planning? The offensive fire with people trapped and a mate. Why is that the plan? We can always dial that one back. This is the worst possible scenario, right? If you're pulling up on a fire thinking you got this, and you got a 200 by 200 warehouse with defensive fire conditions, is this plan gonna fit that fire? No, but what do you have? You have time now, right? We're gonna burn down a warehouse tonight. So I've got time to reconfigure the plan to fit that situation. But if you pull up with no plan, or you pull up expecting a defensive warehouse fire, and you actually find an offensive fire with people trapped and a mayday early in the incident, how quickly can you scale up to this? You get what I'm saying? It's a lot easier to scale back from this incident than it is to scale up, right? So if we have that fire, a refresher on fire behavior, where does fire usually go? Up and out, good job, okay. So anytime I'm thinking about going to a fire, I'm always assuming there's going to at least be a floor above, right? It's at least gonna be one exposed floor. So that might be a first floor and a second floor, it might be a basement and a first floor, it might be the 10th floor and the 11th floor. You get what I'm saying? But I'm always assuming I'm going to have two tactical positions, two interior tactical positions, a fire floor and a floor above. Now, what do you need to do inside of a tactical position? What do you need to do in, on the fire? Good job, guys, put water on. Okay, so we're gonna need how many crews? to put water on. One, one, I, I love two, I want two. You know, in the benefit of the low manpower departments, I'll give you one to two. We're gonna need one to two crews to bring a hose line to this floor. Okay, what else do we need to be doing while we're attacking the fire? Searching, okay. How many crews are we gonna need to search? If we're talking about just one floor, just all one floor at a time, at least one. So. We're, one to two engine companies and some other crew. I mean, see, I would say ladder company, but guys will be like, oh, I don't have a ladder truck. So I just talk about crews, and you can put whatever engine truck thing you want in there. But I need at least two to three crews now on this floor. Does that make sense? What do I need on the floor above? The same thing, right? So I need another two or three above. Now that's gonna, that's gonna start to get a good handle on the, on the situation inside of this building, right? But are there things outside of this building that need to happen? Like what? Okay, RIT. How many crews do I need on RIT? I love the twos thing, but I'll just even give you the one. I'll just even, I'll just even go with one, okay? How many, what else do I need to do outside? Outside truck work, right? Ventilation, ladders, egress, utilities. How many crews? Let me guess, one or two, right? So, okay, so even just one. Even just one, okay? Now I need somebody in command. Should the person that's in command be involved in any of those other things? Probably not, right? If they're gonna do a good job being in command, they need to be focused on it, right? So what, what does that tell me, right? That means I need two companies on the fire floor, I need two companies on the floor above, I need one company doing RIT, and I need one company doing outside truck. What does that tell me right off the bat? How many crews do you need in the first five or 10 minutes of this fire? Six. You need six operational crews, probably two or more people per crew. These can be engines or trucks or rescues or whatever it is you do in your area. But if you don't have six functional crews within the first few minutes of this fire, what's gonna happen? You're going to have to start choosing what you are not going to do. It's just man. I mean, you can love it or hate it. You can throw all the flags and say, we don't, six companies, where am I gonna get that from? I don't know, brother, but I know there's six things you need to do. And I'm good enough at math to know that if you have six things to do and you have three companies there, there's three things that ain't happening, right? I mean, it, it is what it is. So, you know, now the other thing that will happen, and this is the scary part, Offensive fire with kids trapped. Six things need to be done. Three of us are here. What are we going to do? We're going to do it anyway. We're not going to stand outside and let the kids burn up. So now what are we doing? We're overextending ourselves. 
right? We're, we're overextending ourselves. We're on the diving board above an empty tool, empty pool. We're doing the best we can, but we don't have enough stuff. So what does this now increase the likelihood of? Somebody's going to get hurt or killed because we are operating above the threshold. And, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't, and I'm not saying that I wouldn't, but I'm saying that when you knowingly set up your department to not send enough stuff to every fire, you are putting your people in that situation at every fire. Does that make sense? And, and that's how you end up with a guy getting burned up, searching the floor above, because there weren't enough people for him to have a hose line up there. You get what I'm saying? And that's just one example, but that's how those, those anticipatable scenarios you know, happen. So step one in all of this, even before having a good plan, step one is you've got to make sure you have enough stuff going to the fire. Six minimum. Now, not when you get there and confirm it's a fire. When you get there and confirm it's a fire and then call for help, how far away is that help on the best day? Four minutes? How, what can happen on a fire in four minutes? How long was that audio we listened to that DC made it? It's less than two minutes. A lot happens in four minutes. In a lot of departments, it's going to be more like 10 plus minutes. You get what I'm saying? Make sure you've got the resources now. Once you have enough resources, then we can talk about the plan. And we can talk about which one is going to go in which place. You get what I'm saying? And I could talk to you all day about the different plans that I've operated under or how we can design our plan, but it ain't rocket science, right? We, we make our plan for all of those initial needs, attack line placement, water supply, ventilation, writ, all that kind of stuff, right? Bye. <laughs>